In our previous lesson, we learned how to create products and categories for our store. Now it's time to get down to business and create, style and save our shop templates using the Elementor Theme Builder. We'll use Elementor's Theme Builder to create, design and save our shop templates. From the dashboard, navigate to Templates, Theme Builder, try it now. The Theme Builder provides an easy to use interface for managing the templates associated with your website. As you can see, we've already created several templates for our website, including the header, footer, 404 page, and blog templates. If you're unsure how to set up these templates, check out our dedicated tutorials on our channel. At first glance, you'll have a bird's eye view with thumbnails of the site part templates that make up your site. Just click on any part to drill down and you'll see more information, as well as management and editing options for that template. For our store, we will create several templates which will connect with WooCommerce. These include the single product template, product archive templates, and search template. Please note that the single product and product archive template options will only show once you've installed the WooCommerce plugin. We'll begin with the single product template. Before we begin creating it, let's take a quick look at the finished product page to get a better idea of what we'll be building. The product page consists of several elements. On the left are the product image thumbnails. On the right at the top are the WooCommerce breadcrumbs. By breadcrumbs we mean a navigational path to this particular page. Below that is the product title, star rating, short product description, the product price, as well as the quantity field and an add to cart button. If we scroll down a little further, we will see the full description as well as any reviews which have been left. And finally, we have a section displaying related products. Let's head back to the Theme Builder and add a new single product template. This brings us directly into the Elementor library, where you will find the option to use an Elementor block or page template, as well as the ability to insert your own save templates. We're going to create our single product page from scratch, so let's go ahead and dismiss the library. The first thing you'll notice is that the website header and footer have already been pulled into the template, which is exactly what we need. This is because the header and footer templates have been set to automatically display on all of the pages of the website. Click the plus icon to add a section and select the first two column layout. Let's start by adding in all the widgets that we need for this section. This will give us a good idea of the basic structure and then we can add the content and style them one by one. In the widgets panel, select and drag the product images widget into the first column. For the second column, drag in the breadcrumbs widget, then the product title widget, then the product ratings widget. Notice how the widget is currently greyed out. This is because the current product displayed in the editor doesn't have any ratings yet. We'll fix this soon and we'll be able to preview this widget. Next, the short description widget. After that, the product price widget. And last but not least, the add to cart widget. If you would like to change the product displayed here in the editor, you can change this by clicking the gear icon and preview settings. Begin by typing in the name of the product that you would like to preview. Select it. Then select apply and preview. OK, great. The first section is already starting to take shape. You'll now see the product ratings widget is showing correctly as this product has a couple of reviews. Now let's go through each widget and update them with the right content and styling. Select the product image widget. The first option here is to set whether or not we would like the sale flash to appear. For this to show on our product, we must have a sale price entered. Let's quickly add one to our French baguette so we can see this in the editor. In a new tab, open the All Products screen and scroll down to French baguette. We showed you earlier how to add a sales price in the product page, but we can actually amend many details about our products from this screen as well. Select Quick Edit, and you'll be presented with a whole host of options for your product, including the price fields. Let's add three pounds in the sales field and then update our product. Now, back in the editor, save your template as a draft and then refresh the page. As you can see, the sales badge is now showing. Add a border by clicking the border type dropdown. There are several different border types to choose from. After selecting a border, you can change the width, color, 
and border radius. Add space between the top and bottom images by dragging the space slider or by typing in a value. The next settings focus on the thumbnail images. Once again, you can choose from several border options as well as set the spacing between the thumbnails. Great, let's move on to the breadcrumbs next. Select the text color, then select the link color. Next, set the typography. And the last option here is for the alignment. We'll leave it on default, which is left aligned. Now select the product title. This widget is automatically set to dynamically pull in the name of the product. Let's leave the other default content settings and move over to the style tab. Set your text color and typography. You can also apply a text shadow and blend mode if required. Next we'll style the product ratings widget. We can apply styles to the star, the empty star, the link, as well as amend the typography. Change the star size, the space between the stars and text, and the alignment of the entire widget. Select the short description widget next. Set your alignment, text color, and typography. Now let's set our standard and sale price styles. We'll set our alignment, color, typography, and now the sale styles. Stacked allows you to control if the sales price is displayed below or to the side of the main price. And finally, we'll add some space between the two values. The final widget in this immediate section is the Add to Cart button and Quantity field. Let's first style the button. Let's set our alignment to the left. Typography using our global styles. Border type as solid, with two pixels on all sides. We'll set the border radius to zero for nice neat corners. And then our padding. Now let's set our colors for both the normal and hover states. That's the styling for our button finished. Let's switch over to the quantity tab next. We can first add spacing between the quantity field and button, then the typography. Set the border to match our button. and then our normal and focus colors. The final set of styles is for the variations. This particular product doesn't have any variations, so let's switch the product preview so that we can see our changes. We can amend the width of this section the spacing between the variations and button, set your colors and typography for the label, and then the same for the select field. Before we move on to the next widget, let's apply some styles to this section to fit in with the rest of our website. Select the section, and then set a background image in the style tab. Add some margin to the top and bottom, and then some padding. Now select the column which holds the product data and add some padding. Okay, that looks great. Let's now add the product data tabs. Add a new section, then drop in the product data tabs widget. We can set the colors for all the tabs first of all. We're going to leave the default colors for our store, but notice how you can amend the colors for both the normal and active tabs if required. Next, we'll set the typography. And if required, you can amend the border radius. Now switch to the panel tab. Here we are able to amend the style of the contents of our tabs. Set colors and typography for the contents itself. And then the heading. Finally, you can set a border width, radius, and box shadow if required. The last widget we'll add to our product template is the Related Products widget. 
This widget is great to use as it will display additional products to your website's users which are relevant to what they're currently looking at. Create another section and then add some padding and drop in the related products widget. We can first of all amend the content by setting the products per page, columns, how they're ordered, and whether we would like them to be ascending or descending. Now switch to the Style tab where you can see we have a whole host of styling options available. We'll set the column and row gaps first of all, and then the alignment. We can add a border to our images if required, and amend the spacing between the image and title. The next few sections will allow us to control the colors, typography, and spacing for the title, rating, price, and regular price. We can then style the button. Let's amend this so that it matches the rest of our buttons. The final option here is to style the view cart link. To preview this, select add to cart and then make your amendments. Switch to the headings tab now. You can choose whether to show or hide this element. Set the color, font, alignment and spacing. Up next is the styling options for the box which holds all of the previous elements. If I add a border you can see exactly what I mean. Here we can add a border radius, amend the padding and set the styles for both the normal and hover states. The final option here is to amend the sales flash. You can of course toggle this option on or off. Set the text and background colors, as well as the typography. We can then change the border radius, width, and height. Finally, we can choose to display the sales badge on the right or left of the box, and also the distance. Before we save and preview our new template, let's first rename it by selecting the gear icon. Change the title to something that will allow you to easily identify this template for future reference. We'll call ours Single Product Template. Before we publish our template, we have one last step. To the right of the Publish button, you'll see a small arrow. Selecting this will allow you to navigate to the display settings. Here we can set where we would like our template to display. Select Add Condition. And as you can see, Elementor does a great job of automatically selecting products as our chosen location. By selecting the drop down arrow, you can see that we're able to set specific instructions on where we would like our template to display. For example, we may only want this template to display for products in our recipe category. We can also add multiple rules here if required, and can also set these rules to exclude specific products and categories. In our store, we simply need one template for all of our products, so that's what we'll select here. Now go ahead and publish your template. OK, fantastic! As you can see, our single product template is now complete and looks great. This concludes setting up our single product template. In part 2 of this lesson, we'll move on to the product archive and search templates. Oh.